our emotional and our mental states so you know can so imp greatly impact our physical well-being overall so the two really go hand in hand um, so as they're going along the process and the journey of ALS um, it's helpful and important to watch out for things of you know depression and anxiety and I didn't even mention that you know the intense amount of fear that can prevail and be present in terms of you know thinking about the future and one of the things that I really try to encourage people to do as well easier for me to say not sitting in their shoes is you know and we practice this you know how to really stay present planning making plans and that's what your team is there for as well helping you to do that and kind of holding that sense of what might be coming and helping you plan for the future while well, then you can do the best that you can to stay here right to stay present because most of anxiety is future tense so if we can bring people here and stay present there can that can really help the anxiety so being able to identify and oftentimes what i um talked with families and you know themselves whether it's the caregivers or the loved ones and the people living with als talk to everyone about really is how, how to identify within themselves and maybe also within their loved one the kind of signs things to look for right now we know that this is an absolutely emotional time and there's no way around that right so the questions really are how much of the time is spent in you know a depressed mood or um, anxious thinking or behaving right or fearful thoughts or worrying or whatever it may be how much of the time right is it you know i have my time for you know 10 minutes you know maybe it lasts for a couple hours and then i begin to shift out of it does the person have the ability? Do they have tools to be able to move themselves out of it, right? Things like that. So there are always things that I'm, uh, or questions that I'm assessing, you know, as I'm sitting with families and kind of educating about. So it is really important. Um, and it's certainly not a weakness. It is not a weakness if somebody needs to, you know, have medication management for these, um, episodes you know for these this time during their life where they're feeling where they may be feeling you know emotional overwhelm it's incredibly over i can't even imagine right your whole life has shifted so i see you know i see and i hear that a lot that a lot of people and you know things that you know pals may say to me you know people living with als may say to me in terms of um i i'm taking so much already i was never sick you know i don't want to take any more medications whatever it may be and there can be a stigma around it and not that you know i'm a medication pusher necessarily but um there's really you know good biological and physiologic need for it at times that can just you know help the dips not be so low right i mean our brain chemicals really do a great job being able to balance themselves right and there are times that environment life stressors, physical, medical conditions, you know, can come into play and, you know, just offsets that balance or, the, you know, lessens the ability of the brain to really bring those levels back up to speed. Um, and that's a, you know, place where some medications can be helpful, you know. Other ways to manage are certainly, you know, talking and communication is one of the biggest things that I talk to families about as well. Are there arguments that we can prevent? Are there resentments? that we can prevent with communication and learning effective communication that benefits everyone so those things especially when we're you know we come out of the clinic and we're back at home dealing with this day in and day out with one another you know trying to hold it together because all of our lives have been shifted because of this thing uh how can we not take that out on each other 